Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at uh, what it means to have perfect correlation. So in a nutshell, perfect correlation means that two stocks move in tandem with one another or that if you know the returns of one stock, you can predict the returns of the other stock with certainty. So let's create a fictitious example to see what it is. I have here the data for Exxon Mobil company. I'm just going to create another fictitious uh, company called Stock A and I'm going to specify the returns here. Now, what I'll do is I'll take the returns for Exxon Mobil and uh, multiply that by some number, say between 0 and 1, 0 0.7, and then add another percentage, say 2%. Basically, the returns for Stock A are a function of the returns for Stock Exxon, which is uh, the returns for Stock Exxon times 0.7 plus 2% and I can just copy this all the way down and what I'll do also is decrease the number of decimal places so that it looks a little more compact so these are the returns that we have created so we'll calculate the correlation between the Exxon returns and the stock A's returns and the correlation is a perfect one now let's take another example stock B and this time what I'll do is instead of uh, having a plus, uh, I'll have a minus. That is, stock B is uh, say 3% um, equals 3% minus 0 0.5 times Exxon returns. And just copy this all the way down. I'm just going to call this Exxon A and this uh, Exxon B equals correlation of Exxon returns and stock B's returns and the correlation is minus one or negative one. So what's happening here is, is with stock A, if Exxon rises, if Exxon returns increase, stock A's returns increase. Um, and if Exxon's returns decrease, stock A's returns decrease. Whereas with a stock B, it's the other way around. Um, if Exxon increases, it decreases. If Exxon decreases, it increases. So that's why there is a negative correlation here. We can see this data graphically. So I'm going to insert a graph. And uh, select data. I'm going to select the data for the returns for Exxon and stock A and stock B. And uh, I want to choose this particular layout here. So you can see that basically I'll increase the screen area a little bit. So you can basically see there are two straight lines here, each representing one of these uh, um, two series. So um, the blue dots represent stock A. Basically, it shows that as the returns for Exxon, which is on the x-axis, as they increase, the returns for stock A also increase. And the red dots of stock B as the returns for Exxon increase, the returns for stock B decrease. If you look at the formula that we used here, for stock A we used we used 2% plus 0.7 times H3. Now the 2% represents the return from stock A if the Exxon stock return is zero, which is somewhere here. So this is the area where the Exxon stock return is zero. At that point, you can see that the stock return for stock A is 2%. And in the case of stock B, the default return is 3% if Exxon return is zero. And you can see that in the graph here. As uh, the Exxon return is zero, the default return for stock B is 3%. Now, the other point to notice is the slope, the ratio of uh, the Y to the X values coordinates. Um, the slope of this line is 0.7 in the case of the stock A. And the slope of the line is minus or negative 0.5 in the case of stock B. So that explains a little bit about what it means to have two stocks that are correlated and what it means to have positive correlation and negative correlation. So I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.